Hi everyone, and uh, thanks Julie for the introduction, thanks Alison for that reading. And it leads us straight into our talk this morning, which is carrying on our series entitled Letter from Lockdown. Paul's letter to back to the Philippian church to encourage them to keep going as Christians, to follow Jesus. And we get here as far as chapter three, which in my Bible is entitled No Confidence in the Flesh. And this morning we're going to think a little bit about what it means to have our confidence in the right place. I think in society there are two risks with confidence. One is that we might have more confidence than ability. And the other one might be that we have more ability than confidence. Certainly when I was younger, I think I fell into that first category of having more confidence than ability. I can remember my mother when I was learning to drive saying to me as I sat in the passenger seat uh, while she went off to do an errand in the house, saying to me, do not move the car. Well, it was just too great a, a risk, I think, as she left the, the, me in the car with my brother, who was about 10 in the back seat. I said to him as she left the car, don't worry, I've got this. Jumped into the driver's seat, started the engine, having had about two lessons, I think, and went on immediately to reverse the car straight into a brick wall, causing considerable damage to the car, to the brick wall, and uh, after I was told off by my mum to myself as well. Definitely, as a younger person, I think I had more confidence than ability. I think in late, later in life, as I've got older, I think probably it's gone the other way, where I've probably had more ability than confidence. Many of us, I think, will be affected by low self-esteem, thinking of ourselves um, in not a great way. Uh, I was reading this week about uh, J-Lo, uh, Jennifer Lawrence, who, of course, famous singer, ac actress. In 2011, uh, by People magazine, she was voted world's most beautiful woman. And yet she said of herself at that time, she suffered from a, 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 a real low esteem. Thinking of herself as, uh, as ugly, as not worth very much. Amazing, isn't it? We can look at people from the outside and we judge them on what they look like on the outside. And yet on the inside, for many of us, we have a low self-esteem, a low level of confidence. And so today we're thinking about where is our confidence come from? Where is it rightly placed? Many of us thinking, what would it mean for us to regain confidence in leaving our homes and start to re-engage with community, with meeting other people, particularly if during lockdown uh, you've been under, uh, you've been sort of had restrictions because of your age or because of your health. We are thinking, how do we regain confidence? Here in this Bible passage in Philippians 3, Paul starts to address the issue of confidence. He starts by reminding, dealing with a particular situation that the Philippians face and reminding them of the call upon their life. He uh, refers to a particular circumstance that this church was facing where people from a Jewish background who had come to faith were saying that in order to be properly Christian, you had to be first properly Jewish. In other words, if you were Gentile, you would need to be circumcised. You would need to take, do all of the initiations to enable you to be Jewish before you could be properly Christian. And here Paul is writing to the Philippian church saying, let me just remind you where your confidence ought to be. And just in case they were in any doubt of his own pedigree, his own background, he, he says to them, look, I placed my confidence in a number of things initially. He said, first of all, um, I placed my confidence in my starting point. He was born Jewish. He wasn't a convert to Judaism. He was born into a Jewish heritage. And he says, look, I've got confidence in my starting point place. I was circumcised on the eighth day. 
his confidence uh, initially was in his starting point, where he was born, what he was born into. He also said, look, I've also have got confidence in my country of origin. He says, I was a, a, a part of the people of Israel. And he said, my confidence was there in being part of the people of Israel. He said, uh, I was also um, part of a, a, a um, family heritage, the tribe of Benjamin, he says. This is all in verse uh, four and five. He was part of the tribe. He was a, had family heritage that he could fall back on. He was also um, part of the Hebrew of Hebrews. He was religious in his upbringing. He had great zeal. I had zeal in persecuting the church. All of these things where Paul had placed his confidence initially in his life, he said, do you know what? I now consider them all loss for Christ. Not that they were completely unimportant or that he was denying his heritage. He was just saying his confidence needed to be in the right place. Many of us, I think, and many people in the UK might think, oh, I was born in the UK. I must be Christian. I was born in America. I must be Christian. I was born into a Christian home. I must be Christian. Whatever your starting point in life, and many of those things are great starting points. Paul says your confidence needs not to be there. Just because you were born into a Christian family doesn't necessarily make you a Christian. We are called to respond to Jesus. So where was Paul's confidence then in these verses? He said, look, this was my background. Here was where I used to be confident. But now I consider that a loss for the sake of Christ. He goes on to say, doesn't he, in verse uh, six and seven and eight, he says, I consider everything a, a, a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. I think the starting point in our confidence needs to be knowing Jesus as our Lord. That means to make him the, the governor, to make him the boss of our lives, to say, Lord, I invite you in, not just as my saviour, but as my Lord, to be the king, to be in charge, to take me forward, knowing that I am following you as the master. I think that's what it means to place your confidence in Jesus, to say, I want to have Jesus as my Lord. I consider everything else rubbish, Paul said, that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness from my own. You see that list of things at the beginning that Paul said, this was my starting point, my heritage, my birthright, my Jewishness, uh, my tribe, my race, my religion. Paul says here, do you know what? All of that was about righteousness from my own, having my own way of getting close to God. And yet we are called to have our righteousness placed in Christ. You'll have seen this illustration, no doubt. You remember me using it before, or certainly if you've been on Alpha, you know that when we consider our own righteousness about how we get close to God, uh, we all find ourselves in a situation where we have this burden in our lives. The Bible calls it sin, but it just means we are separated from God. All our righteousness, our attempts to get to God are foiled by the sin that gets in the way. All of us are like that. When God came in Christ, he came, he died on the cross, he carried all the weight of the sin off, took it off of us, took it upon himself so that we could be free to get to know God for ourselves. We could be made right, which is what righteous actually means. We can't uh, do that on our own. We can't make things right with God by our own efforts, by the fact that we were born in the right family, at the right time, in the right country. 
we're made right because we say yes to all that Jesus has done for us. Being made right with Christ. You may have been a Christian for many years. You may be watching this and thinking, I'm not sure I've ever taken that step of saying thank you. When you find yourself feeling like this and you say, thank you, Lord Jesus, you took my, the weight of my sin on yourself so that I could be free. In order to get to know Christ, you simply have to say, thank you. Come into, I'm sorry for the stuff that gets in the way. Please come into my life right now. That's what it means to be made right with Christ. That's what it means to respond to him. And Paul goes on to say, rather than just kind of sitting back on his laurels, he goes on in verse 10 and he says this, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection. It's amazing that Paul, who wrote this letter, would have been a Christian for many years. He could have said, look, here's all that I've achieved. Here's all that I've done. I've planted all of these churches. All of these things are so significant that God must look at me and say, wow, Paul, how would we ever do without you? But instead, what Paul says is this. He says in verse 10, I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. Paul didn't deny that there were going to be sufferings any more than we might. And we've experienced our fair share over the last few months. He didn't deny that things were going to be tough. And we know that that's the case. He simply said, I want to know in the middle of this, I want to know Christ more. I wonder what you and I are putting in place in our lives that we might know Christ more. Whether you've been a Christian for 50 years or for five minutes, or maybe just in the course of this talk this morning, you've said yes. I wonder whether we might want to pray with Paul. I want to know Christ more in my life, to know him more fully, to know his presence in the middle of the good times and the difficult times. It's been part of my prayer over the last few weeks for myself that I would not want to sit back and wait for life to come to me, but to simply say every day, Jesus, I want to know you more. There's a worship song that carries that refrain with it. I want to know you. I want to know you more. And so this morning, in these moments, I wonder if there's an opportunity for us to simply pray a prayer that says, Lord, I want to know you more. The power of your resurrection in my life and maybe your presence in the fellowship of my sufferings in these moments, that I might become like you and know you more fully. Many of you listening to this right now have been going through horrendous time, really difficult time, difficult circumstances, alongside COVID-19, other things that may have affected you in your insides. Maybe you should be praying along with me, I want to know you, Jesus, in the middle of all of this. Or maybe you suffer from low self-esteem and that gets in the way of everything that you try and do. You just feel uh, you have a low self-esteem. Maybe in the middle of this, we might pray, Jesus, I want to know you more. Why don't we spend a moment doing that right now as I lead us in a short prayer, just inviting that we might know Jesus more. Lord, thank you for these passages, this passage of scripture we've looked at this morning. And a bit like Paul prayed then, we want to pray for ourselves right now that we might know Jesus more. The power of his resurrection in our life and even experience the fellowship of, of sharing in his suffering. Come Holy Spirit, inspire us to know Jesus more fully. Help us to take steps in this next week that we might practically know you more. Inspire our Bible reading, inspire our praying, inspire our connections with you that we might then might be a blessing to those that we meet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.